welcome to today's video. We are on page 81 of the Keyboard Musicianship, book one. Two dotted quarter note studies. It says here the following studies provide further experience with the dotted quarter note and the eighth note rhythmic figure. If you have not already reviewed the dotted quarter with an eighth note rhythmic figure, please go back to my other video for page 80, Ode to Joy. Alrighty then. So, we see here we're in folk song, and this piece is in 3-4 time. We have a pickup bar. Let's go ahead and place our fingers in their appropriate hand positions. Finger number 1 right here, and finger number 5 right here. Let's go ahead and try it one hand at a time first. One, two. A, B, C sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, e. A. after two because of the pickup bar. Let's go ahead and now say the note names for the left hand. One, two, three. A, two, three. C sharp, two, three. E, two, three. D, two. Rest, again. A, two, three. C sharp, two. Rest. C sharp, D, E, C sharp, two. Rest or release. So remember the left hand is non legato, the right hand is legato. Let's go ahead and put these together. Remember, only put these together once you are comfortable with each hand individually. When putting them together, work in one measure at a time. Don't rush through it. Once you finish one measure, move on to the next. Then put them together like a little wall, like a little pancake. Here we go. One, two. Song. Remember adding those dotted eighth, those dotted quarter notes with the eighth rhythms. Let's go ahead now to Home Sweet Home on the next on the same page. This is by Henry Bishop, and this piece here introduces us to playing two voices in one hand. We have a soprano and an alto voice being played in the right hand, and the left hand has like a tenor or bass voice. And so we're now playing with a more fuller or a thicker harmony in music. And this is very common. This will introduce us to being able to play a little bit uh, split with the hands. And so this, will, this concept will not be introduced in this lesson today. But usually when hands have more than one voice, especially in the right hand, the top voice is the one that should be the loudest. So as we play this, let's go ahead and practice playing from the right hand and working our way down. Okay, so placing our fingers in position, we see that this is in the key of B flat, which is... Put those B flat and E flat there. So we place our hand position in this, in this way, it doesn't appear to be any more bigger than this, and the left hand, of course, is going to be in the same hand position. Okay, so let's talk about just the right hand first. Okay, so we're going to talk about only the top note of each, uh, of each beat. Here we go. One, two. B flat, C, D, E flat, F. Because of the pickup bar at the, at the beginning. Now, 
Once you review those notes only, then you're going to review the alto voice or the lower voice in the right hand. Let's start by just playing the first notes of the pickup bar. B flat C, B flat, B flat, B flat, rest, rest, B flat, bass. Okay, so let's work on this page part here. So we have B flat, A, B flat, two, three. Now let's talk about those two measures right there. This is going to be an interesting little section. Now it's going to require a little bit of lifting of the fingers, of the thumb, and it's not going to exactly sound perfectly legato. And the reason for that is because you want to be emphasizing the voice in the right hand. Okay? As you can hear, there is going to be a little bit of a break in between these voices, and that's okay. The legato melody is the one that really wants to be uh, legato or slurred. While the left, no, the lower voice is going to be more of a harmonic uh, supporting role or voice. And it's not necessary that that is going to be played legato. Let's go ahead and play that again. B flat, A, B flat. Now, if we were playing a synth or a string patch or even on the organ and we wanted that to sound nice and legato, we would have to do these very extreme legato finger techniques to play, just kind of slide off the keys. But that's not the case here for on the piano. Let's go on to the next measure. B flat C, B flat, B flat, B flat, rest, rest, B flat, A, B flat, two, three, release. Okay, so although I did say rest, rest for measure number two, and then of course there at the bottom, there are really no rests written, but it's it, it's except it's um it's understood that the alto voice will have rests while the soprano voice is playing those notes. Let's go ahead and now put our hand for playing both voices in the right hand. Here we go. One, two, three. B flat C third. B flat F. say that it is only the top of voice, which is the soprano, that has the legato, while the bottom voice in the right hand, the alto, does not. And that can be accepted. If you would like to play that way, it is perfectly fine. However, if you want to put a little bit of legato between some of the notes that are able to be played legato, for example, the repeated notes such as the B flat, you can do that. But if you just want to treat them all as non legato, that's perfectly fine as well. Let's go ahead and play that one more time. One, two, three. As you notice, as I place my hand in B-flat position, you want to keep them inside the keys. You don't want to be moving back and forth. So always keep them in such a way so that you can place them, play them all at the same time, and all you have to do is bring your fingers down. Okay? Let's go and talk about the left hand now. Start some measure number one, figure number five. One, two, three, four. B-flat, C, D, two, rest, rest. C, F, B flat, two, three, rest. B flat, C, D, two, rest, rest. C, F, and then a third. Two, three, release. Let's put them both together.
together. Now remember, please practice each voice individually first with the correct fingering. You may need to write in some fingerings here and there to remind you about what, which to play. Once you are comfortable playing each voice individually, one hand at a time, then put them both together, one measure at a time, never rushing beyond a measure you have not perfected. Here we go. One, two, three. today, I want to address two things. I want to address measure number three and then the second to the last measure. There is a section that requires one hand to hold one note in the alto while moving the voice in the soprano. And that's going to, your fingers are going to feel a little bit of a strain doing that. And there's going to be the temptation that you want to let go of this A before you play the C or even before releasing that C. But I want to remind you, please avoid the temptation. Hold every note for the number of beats it requires. It is going to be a little bit of a strain, but that's going to require that you lift or that you build strength in those fingers to do this. There it is. Alright, and then we will see you in our next lesson.